Hi folks, welcome back to the channel. A while back we uploaded a video with Mike and Sherry Shipley with OCC Tools in Dora, Missouri. And you all liked that video so much, we decided to air the whole uh, video for you. And we hope that you'll enjoy it. And again, we want to say thank you to Mike and Sherry for having us down there that day. We enjoyed their uh, time of them showing this, their shop and their, his carvings and the way he makes knives. And so I hope that you'll enjoy this video. And again, thank you for uh, subscribing. Hit the like bell, and we'll see you real soon. Mike and Sherry, thank you again for taking time out of your schedule and, and chatting with us, and uh, we appreciate it very much. Mike, I want to start with you. Um, when was your, uh, when did you catch the carver's bug, I, they call it, you know? Well, I got thinking about that. It's way back earlier than we thought. I remember when I was a kid, yeah. <laughs> I don't know, but, yeah, 10 years old, I don't know, but I wanted to carve a little man out of a flat board. I couldn't forget out how I'd get the shoes. <laughs> the shoes would have to stick straight out, you know, because yeah. there was no thickness. You know? yeah. I worked around with an old dull pocket knife for a long time, but, but actually, uh, we married in 76, and uh, we go, like I said, to Dog Patch a couple of times in uh, Branson. And boy, I'd watch some of them. I think, boy, I, I think I could do that, you know. Mm -hmm. Went to Branson once, or uh, Dog Patch once, seen Harold in over down there. And we went again a year or two later, and he was gone. And I didn't get to see the little man carving it. Oh. Let's uh, Dog patch, hmm. but uh, that's what really got me going. I guess probably right before we got married. I guess. Yeah, I think we were just dating when we went down there. Yeah, but anyway, uh, probably actually about '76 is when it really got started. Mm -hmm. And who who were some of the carvers that you remember that was preeminent at that time? All I name I really remember is Ed Ed Edson. I think was his name. And uh, Fred Carrington, mm -hmm. they had a shop in town. I think it was called Mountain Wood Carvers. Mm -hmm. They're on the strip on 76, mm -hmm. wasn't it? Yeah. They're on 76. Yeah. It's right there by Ball Numbers, I think. Mm -hmm. Is it that where you bought the Harold Enloe book? I know, but I bought a few tools there. I didn't know what to buy. But I mean, what really got me started, I bought one cheap knife. It's like four five dollars and a piece of wood and a, and a I guess the end of the was was book first mm -hmm. book mm -hmm. that's what got me started mm -hmm. and I thought boy I invested a lot of money in that you know <laughs> with a few dollars <laughs> but that that got me going that that's what that's what got you started in the wood car I didn't know what kind of wood to use I tried cedar and everything else yeah. you know mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and uh, yeah. finally heard about basswood and um, yeah. just went from there. I started ordering a little piece or two of basswood. Boy, that's just like gold. Just trying to make it last as long as I could, you know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. I'll just draw the pattern out on it and start carving. Didn't we cut basswood, local basswood? Yeah. Oh, I, yeah. I, there's some basswood around here, or linden, mm -hmm. linden trees. But it was harder. I found a big old tree down on Bryant River there about. Right. But Sherry's dad off down our real river, and I cut that big tree. Couldn't get to it, so we <laughs> cut short logs for a band mill. It floated down in a bo John boat <laughs> yeah. down to the truck. Oh my goodness! Had to saw it up, and it was so hard you couldn't. <laughs> it couldn't carve. So there's a big difference in basswood. <laughs> All that work. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. We figured out that those aren't so, basswood. Is not. Well, I used a lot of it. Yeah, we did. But it, it's a, the growth. Yeah. That's what it is. Yeah. yeah. That's why northern wood is. Mm -hmm. And also, I bought a, a big load one time at, from a saw mill man in New York and saw. Somebody told me about him. I called him. Yeah, I've got a whole bunch of basswood out back here. Boy, I went down there and the little Ford Ranger pickup. And I piled in all I could haul in the little Ranger. And that's some of the hardest wood I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it was southern wood. It's, yeah. yeah. But anyway, I got started doing that and carving, just carving a few. And, but I, I always thought, got thinking, something that occupied that much of my time 
it, it needed to pay me. I needed to pay somebody, but, you know, because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. I was struggling to make a living. You know, I had three kids, and it's hard to make a living. But right. and I also had that mind. I was, I took things and I had goals set. I things and stages. First, I wanted to get good enough to actually sell some carvings a craft show or something, you know. And then I no, I had to get good enough to sell some of the Branson, you know. Mm-hmm. And I finally got there, and that's kind of a rough start. Uh, uh, Harold Turpin was working mm-hmm. over there then. Oh, yeah. yes, yeah. Harold Turpin. And the guy that ran the Silver Dollar City Carver's shop, uh, I can't think of his name now, boy, he really criticized my stuff right there in front of everybody, you know. Oh my. And boy, I went home determined I was gonna, you know, be better different the next time. Yeah. It was, you know, yeah. so, so some of you. So maybe that, that criticism, that even though it kind of hurt your pride a little bit, it kind of yep. inspired you to, uh, yep. to step it up. And, and Harold Hart was doing a shop there in Mutton Hollow. Yeah. And he had his own shop there. And I carried some stuff in there and, so a team, and I guess he's busy. That's bothering him, you know. And uh, he really criticized the nose or something on it. Said the nose is too big and it's too square. Uh, I left home, you know. And, but I learned from that. And you know, years later, about twenty years later, we got to run into Harold here and there, you know. And he was back to carving. He says, you know, I owe you an apology from a long time ago. I said, well, at the time I thought she did too, but I said, that was the best. She gave me the best advice I ever got. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and he said, I love you guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. Uh, you know, I learned from it. And then, yeah. Yeah. Well, that's how we do. That's, I mean, that's, yeah. that's how you're going to get better at anything is by learning and, and by uh, doing. And I got the right, from our mistakes. big idea. I was going to do my first book. And I... Uh, Peter Engel revised against it. He said, you know, when you do a book, said, you're the expert then, you know. And uh, I wasn't good enough to do a book, but I did it anyway. And so what was your first book called? I don't know if we got a copy of it around. Uh, um, but it was published locally, Ozark wasn't it? Characters yeah. or something. Carver, we published it locally. Ozark County yeah. Characters. At the newspaper office yeah. in Gainesville. Mm-hmm. And his cousin Roberta was working out there then, so she... Yeah, and the, she the editor of it was uh, one of the <coughs> school teachers. Mm-hmm. And he yeah. did it well, through them. I forgot his name, but yes, he was. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, yeah. of course, you wouldn't, did you publish to a publisher, the book business is, is sold up, you know, it's, yeah. you got to go through publishers. Right. And distributors won't take anything except from a publisher, <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. so I sold it local. And we still got some, we send out. That's what we donate now when uh, the clubs have their shows or whatever. Mm-hmm. What what we have left, we send the drawings they do for, their, gotcha. for their drawings yeah. and stuff. Yeah. And so your next book, I remember, was it the the Sea Captain book? Was yep. that your yeah, next that book that you and that, came up with? How how did that being up from the Ozarks? How in the world did that inspire you to be to well, carve sea captains? We was driving a church van. <laughs> I won't mention his name, but a gentleman, an old gentleman and his wife would go down and pick them up. Well, he was down dirt road and pick them up and haul them to church, you know. And he knew I carved some, you know. And he brought me an old, real bad figurine, you know, of a sea captain. He said, you might want to do something with that. And I got to looking at it, looking at it, and I redesigned it some. And of course, it wasn't very good, the one I'd done, but... Uh, he was better than his figure. <laughs> and uh, somehow I got hooked up with uh, Mountain Wood Carvers in Essence Park, Colorado. Mm-hmm. Pam Schuyler Johnson. Mm-hmm. And uh, I sold a lot of Santas out there, just by mail. Mm-hmm. But she, uh, she seen my seat captain, and she called uh, Fox Chapel Publishing and said, you need to do a book with this guy. Huh. And, uh, he, he, then they called me. Mm-hmm. That's where I started with the publisher. You know, was a sea captain. Book. She was the one that suggested the sea captain. Yeah. Would be a good. good yeah, she book. suggested that sea captain be a good. But then Mike is the one that done all of the 
thinking about the characters, you know. Right, first, first mate. mate the first mate. Yeah, <laughs> yeah had All to add them. Yeah. yeah. Then I forget what the next book was. Uh, Carving a country bears and the bears and then and, the hillbillies. Uh, I think the Santa book. Oh, Santa! Santa oh, Snowman yeah, come Santa. next. Oh, that's right. That's right. And Santa then the hill, and then the bears, and then the hill folks. Yeah, the, hill and folks. the hill folks was your last book that you had published. Yeah, that was with, it. With Fox Chapel, wasn't it? But, uh, yeah. What What is the hardest thing about um, of coming up with ideas for a book? Is it the ideas, or how did you come up with all these? different well, avenues of, of these characters? That's, that's a good question. I noticed things that just hit pop in my head. I remember one time was coming back from uh, driving across Kansas. Have you ever, have you ever drove across Kansas? You got all thinking time. <laughs> yeah, <you know>? exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was coming from Matt Ward car was coming home. And uh, that was the Bear book, I think. I think you're right. I think I remember you. And I had the that. characters on. Well, by the time we... In Missouri, I had the book figured out in my head what was what was going to do, you know. Wow. Because when we'd go out there, we'd always buy like one of these, these bears, you these know, bears like mm -hmm. this, and so he got to, yeah. he got to thinking about the bears like like these, you know, like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> but by the time we hit Missouri, I, I had the book figured out. Mm -hmm. That is fantastic! Wow. I had bears on my mind, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And that has been a big, big seller still today. Yeah. We, we can still go to shows here and there, and you'll see a bear, you know, somebody's carved on the yeah. table there. Yeah. 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 But, uh, well, even in chip chats, you know, you'll see uh, some of their articles of shows, yeah. and they'll, you'll see some of your, your style of bears that are, are still but out there. Yeah. My style developed. I'm a, I want to carve stuff people could actually afford, you know. Mm -hmm. When was the first class that you ever taught that you actually uh, did? Mount Carver's in Colorado. <clears throat> Is that right? Because I said, why would a person drive a thousand miles to torture myself? <laughs> yeah. You know, that's my first one. I said, well, one good thing about that old Norman still had a fool of myself. <laughs> but no, we went really well. Yeah. And uh, yeah. we done two or three yeah. class, classes yeah. out there. You know, yeah. Did real well. Mm -hmm. And they used to teach at Springfield and Branson. Mm -hmm. Used to hold classes at Soda Dollar City when they in offered Iowa. classes. In in Iowa. Iowa. In Iowa. A lot in Iowa. <laughs> Seen a lot of corn country, did you? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> World Carver's Congress. But yeah. Getting yeah. Denny doing a class, and then uh, that led to Congress. They had the jury in to do classes there. And uh, we've been classes all over New York, and Michigan, Minnesota. And so. Indiana. Basically, what I understand from you is that you were, you basically was a self-taught carver. You never took a class mm -hmm. ever, maybe one or two down the years later, maybe, but just for kicks and grins. Yeah, I never had. But to learn the craft itself, it was just you and the bench knife and... Yep. And, and the coping saw, the critic saw them out there, you know. Yeah, that's how I self-taught myself mm -hmm. at the first book of Harold's. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I'm standing on his shoulders. Yeah. Well, a lot of us are. Yeah. And a lot of us are standing on your shoulders too today. Mm -hmm. You know. But it was hard. Of course, nobody around here. I didn't know about you at the time, or I don't know if you was carving or not. But uh, you know, uh, when nobody had talked to you about carving. Yeah. You know? yeah that was. <laughs> I, know, I know the feeling. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They think yeah. we're crazy. You know. Yeah. 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 Like, why would you want to do this when you could be doing this? You know. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. I, you know, you you but love what you do. You know. Some carving was mm -hmm. done. Way, way back there, mm -hmm. just out of necessity, just making stuff to use on your farm, you know. Mm -hmm. Well, now I wanted to ask Sherry, where did she come in in all this? Did she, was, did she, was she a carver? Did she paint? Did, what did she do or, or no, whatever? She, she wasn't, didn't, no. didn't like it at first because no. I was making a mess on the floor <laughs> and the girls were small, babies, you know. Yeah. <laughs> and I'd be a carver instead of. Half of them get away from yeah. bed or something, you know. <laughs> Where's Mike? Huh? He's yeah. in the back room. <laughs> but then she, after I got selling some, you know, she finally like, oh, came hmm. around, you know. Might keep you around now, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he just went there. Well, well, I've got a picture here somewhere of him carving in, in the trash can in the living room. And John, I think it's Joni standing there watching him. 
carve. I, yeah. We've got a picture. She can barely walk. I just, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. But uh. But no, that. I, I don't know. I, guess, I can remember him telling me somewhere later on that, like, I was working. Well, I'd worked outside of the home only like six years. I was stay at home mm -hmm. all the time. Mm -hmm. And then I went to work at uh, Country Mart in West Plains in the deli and I worked there for two or three years. And uh, Archie Daly owned the Crossroads store here yeah. <laughs> at Dora and he said, why are you driving all the way out here to work? He said, come to work for me. So I did and worked there three years. And Mike's like, why are you working here? He said, just stay home and help me sell this stuff. So that's what we done. I started promoting Mike. <laughs> I, You've done a good I, job. Yeah, I, I, I started promoting him and promoting what he could do and booking our, trying to book a class. And mm -hmm. he didn't always want to get out there and talk and do it. No. <laughs> I'm the, I was the talker. <laughs> yeah. I was the... Uh, it was hard to... Yeah. Oh, I don't want. Oh, I don't want to. I don't. I don't want to do that. But we're going to do this. Yeah. <laughs> she put her foot down. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah. kind of hard on you. You don't get in front of people. Yeah, he didn't want to. He didn't, want to, he, he do he didn't place, think you know. he wanted to be in front. But of uh, he didn't think he could teach. Mm -hmm. But a, he did it. A preacher and told me. Good at it. His name was Vic. Vic. I asked him one time about doing the Bible studies and stuff up in front of the auditorium class. You know, he said, "Well," he said. Do not just not be scared or nervous. You got to know your subject very well. Mm -hmm. Know it better than most people that's listen to you. Yeah. And I applied that to my mm -hmm. carving classes. Mm -hmm. I knew more about my my carving, my style, than anybody in that room. You know, yeah. they should learn about it. So mm -hmm. that that really helped. Yeah, helped that helped. Yeah. 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 Well, and the more you did it, the more comfortable you became yeah. doing it mm -hmm. down the road. Oh, yeah. You know. Yeah. And that helps out a lot. But that first time, boy, you think, what am I doing? Yeah, <laughs> what am I doing? Someone else, someone else yeah. can sure do this better than I could, I'm sure. Yeah. But I, and also, I, I was intentionally do, creating a style that was simple and fast, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. That went over real well in classes. Yeah. I, would, I would want to spend a certain amount of time on, it, on a piece, mm -hmm. you know. Because at one time, you had it down to how many cuts it took to get certain ones done, yes. didn't you? Yep, yep. He could, yep. He that could still tell blows you my how, mind. Yeah, yep. he could tell you how many cuts it took to get something done. Yeah, mm -hmm. just on the face, you know, mm -hmm. stuff. Mm -hmm. But um, what, 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 what obstacles do you think that uh, that keeps new carvers from from sticking at it, sticking with it? What do you think is the biggest thing? Well, probably the biggest hurdle is you're not around people that like the same thing, you know. Mm -hmm. that's, that's a big problem for me, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I stayed with it. Because, you know, the, what I do is I get a lot of beginner comments, you know, and I just wanted to know what your thoughts on that, you know, for a beginner. Mm -hmm. You know, what, what obstacles that you faced as a new carver at that time that kept you in the game and in, in, to where you're at today? Yeah. Well, I always had a creative streak. Even before that, I'd make these little woodworking, you know, stuff like that, and building cedar boxes and stuff. And I always wanted to make stuff, but the ideas would just come. Mm -hmm. I look for ideas all over the place, you know, just, yeah. you know. And the, sh the sharpening of tools is a big hurdle, too, for a beginner. Mm -hmm. You know, you just got to learn how to do it. Yeah. If you can't sharpen, you probably shouldn't make carbon, you know. Right. Yeah. It's necessity. Well, that's a whole different world too. You know, it's yeah. you know it's yeah. you know because uh, as now as you're as a tool maker, you know the importance of having good quality tools. And yeah. a lot of people that nowadays they they find these cheap sets either on Amazon or at Hobby Lobby or wherever. Yeah. You know, and not knocking that stuff, but it's just you know you get what you pay for. Things have really changed. <clears throat> last thirty or forty years, everybody wants stuff that, that they don't value the work with somebody's hands you know yeah That's because you know really you're putting you're putting part of yourself into this carving yeah. that you're mailing out or giving it to someone or selling or whatever it may be mm -hmm. and, and you're putting a lot of your time 
yep. and abilities into that piece. I, I gave it all I had. Yeah. Still do. Yeah. You know? No, he still yeah. does. No, yeah. he didn't just give it all he had. He still gives it all yeah. he had. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, I, I put everything into it. Well, you know, it, it's encouraging to hear from people that how you inspired them, mm -hmm. you know, well, and still today, you know, I'm one of them. And you can never improve if you just carve day here and yeah. one next week. Uh, right. Yeah. Right. Right. It yeah. don't work. Right. Right. Yeah. I mean, I, I try to carve every day if it's just 10 yep. minutes mm -hmm. or, a, mm -hmm. you know, yep. four or five hours, whatever. Yeah, I mean, you, you've got to keep at it. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the way you because, I mean, I can tell the difference. If I let it go a day or two, mm -hmm. I can go back and think, I really... I've got to think about this for a yeah. second, you know. That's where it is. <laughs> but uh, you got to keep uh, it in your mind, in your system, you know. Where has, uh, and you may not know this off the top of your head, but where has some of your work that you've done over the years, where, where has it gone to? Give me states, countries, you uh, know. I mean, yeah, we've got them everywhere. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're everywhere. Uh, uh, well, like our banker John Harlan. Well, mm -hmm. I said, where we bank at, mm -hmm. out here at Gainesville, mm -hmm. he would buy little hillbillies and take with him when he would go places. These banker things, you know, he... Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. He would take... He would conferences. Take, yeah, when he would go to banking things and little conferences. Because he could do a perfect imitation of Walter Brennan, hmm. the movie guy, you know, yeah. oh, also yeah. with overalls and stuff. Oh, yeah. He could sound as like yeah. him, you know. Wow. Huh. And he'd do that at their bankers' commits and things, he, he, whatever it was. Buying, he was buying our little hillbillies, and he would take them and give them to his people at those conventions. All but it, yeah. him being a banker, he said, well, if I buy more of these, can I get a cut right? <laughs> <laughs> I said, no. no. You're a banker, dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 So, yeah, everybody's always wanting a discount. Uh, yeah, you yeah. Know. yeah. But they're everywhere. Uh, and just and just two weeks ago, even though Mike doesn't carve anymore, mm -hmm. a little girl got married. Well, she's not a little girl anymore, but she, you know, grew up around here, and she knew he was a wood carver. She wanted two trees for her wedding, top of her wedding cake, and we're thinking trees. Mm. <laughs> she wanted. Mike to carve her Aww. two little trees. Well, you used to babysit. Uh, well, well, she was. Like I said, she grew mm -hmm. up here. The girls babysit for him, yeah. So, you know, even here we are today. <laughs> right, right. Somebody remembering what he done and wanted something he done. Mm -hmm. So it, I, just like this, but not painted, sort of. Mm -hmm. Along this line, just two little old trees. And sitting something. on top of her wedding oh, cake, yeah. but they weren't painted green, you know, mm -hmm. she just wanted <laughs> She just wanted to carve yeah. in a, some trees. Uh, yeah. 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 And sometimes it's the simple things that people, yeah. mm -hmm. that they want. you know, yeah. it's nothing yeah. elaborate. Yeah. I've always wanted to ask you, and I'm looking behind you there, the well-dressed moose. Where did that come from <laughs> in your book? The what? The well-dressed moose. The well-dressed mm -hmm. moose had to come from Colorado somewhere, I don't Probably know. Probably did. <laughs> Because I'll get that asked me once in a while. Yeah. Where did Mike come up with this idea for the well dressed? I said, you know, I don't know. He, he probably was born about Salina, Kansas, going back to <laughs> On the long trek home. <laughs> yeah, that's a book I did driving across Kansas. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I don't know. And they wanted me to do a, another book with barnyard animals, the publisher did. And I said, I won't do it. I don't, they're not interested. Just couldn't come up with it. Yeah. <laughs> they wouldn't. They wouldn't let me pick my own subjects there. So yeah. They, yeah. It's it's funny how some of these people are like. Well, you ought to do this and this. You know, they give you suggestions. Well, it's not practical. Yeah. Why did you never do like that? Well, I would say I, I said I know these people mm -hmm. by these books. I said I, I know what they're mm -hmm. who they are. You Cause know. Because you teach it. You go out and teach, and you're, yeah. you're rubbing elbows with these people. Yeah. Never did. Never did <coughs> do a Halloween one either. But just never. Really wanted I thought, to. I did some witches though. Yeah, yeah, but witches. not not a book. And the witches are just as cute as they can yeah, be. I mean, yeah. you know, just old woman. <laughs> now you you did um, you had a a store in Chicago if I remember bought some stuff from you, didn't they? Oh, cease. Uh, wait. Cease getting. I think cease. was your name. And you sent quite a bit of to, to me if I remember right the stories that you mm. told me when I come down a car yeah. with you. It was just Christmas stuff. Christmas, okay. And Woolies. Was that her? Yeah. yeah. She's on like North Chicago 
Evanston or Evansville, Evanston or something like that. But she had a shop there, and she had a bunch of little lady collectors. Well, that'd be. They come in every year. Yeah. So I'd carve something, stand it different. And yeah. Um, they'd clean them out. And, yeah. Yeah. Now I'm going to ask probably a question you probably have no answer to it, but from the time you started in 1976 to till the last few years, how many carvings do you think you've done? Oh, 50, 60,000. <laughs> wow, that was pretty yeah. quick. <laughs> well, I kind of roughly figured one time, yeah. that's a long time ago, about 30,000 then probably just kind of going on what I don't know. One of these sales went days, I will count what I have left. <laughs> I would like to know when that, when, no, when that, you do that. That'd be a good job for JC. Yeah, she likes to count. <laughs> she likes to count. Well, yeah. me too, I like to count. Yeah, too. she's yeah. got her paws, likes to count, you know. Yeah, because I, I know that just from the shop down here and the house here, I, I, I can't wrap my well, brain around this. It, it, just, mean, it still blows my mind today, yeah. the amount of carving yeah. that you've done. Well, I mean, just think yeah. about, like I said, talk, talking about the way you used to do it by the week. You used to set up, gosh, there was like, wasn't there like, I don't know, 15 or, I mean, there's yeah, a bunch sometimes of them. About 20 a week. But, oh, yeah, there was a bunch of them. Small ones. Depending on. All sizes. And yeah. you always done, he always thought about, you know, like, height and mm -hmm. boots and faces and hats and then symbol you know mm -hmm. so that so that he could get in the 20 for the week you know, does that make right. sense yeah. Yeah. yeah a lot of people call that production car but a lot of people frowns on it but um, but you, you know i when you talk classes you know i i can remember people even in sitting your classes and, and people would be you know we'd be jibber jabbering there while we're waiting for our turn or whatever and people said you know it's so neat that I'll I'll be able to take three or four pieces home yeah, with me at the end, end, of, end of the three days or five days seminar it was, <laughs> and that's really what I think really uh, made you, you know, jump right out there ahead a lot of other carvers because of the fast pace. And I heard that a lot. Yeah. People say this is the first time I've ever took a piece home finished and painted. Mm -hmm. I mean, said it was two or three pieces, you know. Yeah. And I, to me, I think that that built such confidence in people yeah. that hey, I can do this. Yeah, you know? I, I try to build that. Um, and uh, I try to take them maybe big cuts, big cuts, big cuts. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One place I just for kicks, I in class I told them we was going to have a biggest chip contest at four o'clock this afternoon or something. You know, mm. and uh, okay, you know. And I come that time, I said, okay, it's a big ship time or something. And that one lady, I, I just turned around and just watched her. But there's other classes going on too. That was at, at Crete, Nebraska, at a university there. And I seen her. She went to one of the other places where they some do mallet work, you know, yeah. big oh, yeah. ship. Yeah. Pull one of them out, you know. <laughs> like here. Yeah. <laughs> she, she really thought that was funny. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Oh, I caught her doing it, but uh -huh. anyway, just for kicks, you know, but mm -hmm. I always stress that, you know. Yeah. So as we kind of wind this down here, Mike and Sherry, again, thank you for letting me come, but what advice would you give to new carvers that are just, that's just trying to get their foot in the door out here and, uh, and enjoying it? Just practice. Practice. You, you've got to get something in your mind. We've talked about that before, you know. You have to get things. And by that, I don't know what the it is, I don't know, but uh, you have to understand what to do to, to get to a certain point, you know, and do it, you know, make plan, you know. Mm -hmm. You gotta set goals. And like I said, you, you gotta carve every day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But uh, one thing really hindered me, but uh, and if you can sketch, you know, a decent drawing, that really helps too. I've heard you say that a lot. But uh, I never could draw very good, but I would have it in my head what that piece is going to look like when I got it done. You couldn't, you know? you couldn't uh, get it on the paper. And mm -hmm. like it was in, in his, his head. head. Yeah. Mm -hmm. To get it from here to here. Yeah. But he could yeah. get it from I, here to the piece of wood. All I needed mm -hmm. was a silhouette. Mm -hmm. That's tough on a new carver, you know. Mm -hmm. 
and the new car was like it. I remember doing it too. You just don't know where to cut next. You know what do I do next? You know, mm -hmm. it's just a hump you have to get over. You know, mm -hmm. yeah, you know I still get hung up on those humps. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, still today. I did too. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, and I never did like it. I hated that oh, feeling. Me too. You know. I just thought, man, alive. You know, come so on. I tell people just <laughs> keep cutting. I said if you, yeah, if you <clears throat> ruin it, I said I'll sell you another one. Mm -hmm. That's what they tell right. us. Yeah. Do you, it's just a piece of wood, you, you know. Do you yourself, Van, do you think about a new piece once in a while? Mm -hmm. Do you think, well... I had to have that to keep I me mean, going. Yeah. Do you think, well, I need a new hillbilly? Mm -hmm. Or do you think, well, maybe he needs a cowboy hat? Right. Or, yeah, I'm, do I'm, you think of that stuff yourself? Oh, I do. Yourself? You know, and I'm like, my God, sometimes I can, I can see it up here, but I can't get it to the paper. But I can sit there mm -hmm. and I can pretty much carve it mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but for some reason sometimes it takes me a while mm -hmm. then like okay well then i'll just kind of maybe make a rough sketch of it mm -hmm. after i've got it carved mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. know for a pattern for mm -hmm. later on mm -hmm. you know but of course now there's just some of those guys out there they can just oh yeah, you know, oh, yeah. Just, you know. I, I was wanting to do that but i even bought books you know sketching books how to yeah. you know yes. cartoon books yeah and i was wanting to do that but i too busy carving i just, just <laughs> you know, yeah. you know yeah well you, know. you can't just do it once in a while you've got to yeah I, you've absolutely just do it, you know? absolutely just absolutely well mike and sherry we're going to uh cut this off here and thank you so much for having me and uh, appreciate it so much and you opened in your house and you shopped to me and uh, yeah, no problem glad to have you and um try not to make this a Come again. <laughs> Not be a stranger, so right? And so yeah. I was gonna to have to show my ID to show who, like, who are you yet. Yeah. But, but yeah, I always have good intentions, but they don't get done. Oh, yeah. You know. But uh, yeah. but life gets takes a lot of turns and twists. Yeah. You know. And uh, a lot of life gets in the way, you know. And I know you all had your ups and downs and still dealing with lots of ups and downs, but again, thank you for having me today and, and appreciate it so much. No problem, appreciate it. All right. Anytime. Well folks, we're going to uh, Again, thank you for joining us today. We wish you all happy carving, and we'll see you at the next uh, next video. Have a good day. Mm -hmm.